Hi, this presentation will talk about some of the uh, built-in function calls that make it easy to build perspective matrices. The earlier presentation already discussed the theory behind how to form perspective matrices. Uh, these functions make it easy to actually use these in a program. So they're based on the old OpenGL functions, GL Frustum and GLU Perspective. Uh, the software, the linear algebra route routines I provided for the course have versions called set GL Frustum and set GLU Perspective. Uh, all these are described in section 2.4.7 of the PDF. So the more general command is GL Frustum. So Frustum is a truncated four-sided pyramid. So the picture of a pyramid, we can think of here as a square base for pyramid here. It's got sides coming up to the peak. And if we slice off the top, if we remove this part here, the bottom part is the frustum. A frustum is what we see when we're looking out through a rectangular window like the view screen of a monitor on a computer or something like that. So GL frustum is used to define a perspective transformation that maps a frustum into a 2 by 2 by 2 cube. So let's illustrate this with a graph. You draw the axes first. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. Here's the z-axis pointing out of the board. And the viewer is sitting at the origin, as always, or as is the custom. And looking down the direction of the negative z-axis. But a frustum is going to allow more general positions than just the center of the negative z-axis. In particular, what we're going to do is the viewer is going to be looking at some rectangular window. And here's the this is going to be at, from x goes from L for left, to x goes for R for right. So L for left, R for right, and Y will range from B, B for bottom, to T, T for top. And this is the, if we map this down to the to the z-axis, this is where z equals minus n, and n is for the near clipping plane. And we're sort of envisioning a window, a rectangular window here, placed in space, ranging over these x values, these y values, and the viewer is looking through it. So as the viewer looks through, they're seeing the view they're seeing is spreading back. From the viewer. Let me draw that a little better. So this. So here's the line of view, like this, like this, and then there's also a back side to the frustum, which back corner to the frustum here. Right. And so this is a frustum, a little hard to picture. It's a rectangular front, a rectangular back. The back is spreading out from the viewer. And the back plane is where z equals minus f, and this is for the far clipping plane. And then the command for GL frustum is you just do the following, I'll do the set version. Set GL frustum takes left, right, bottom, top, near, far, and it sets the current matrix, I'll do M dot. This sets the matrix M equal to the matrix which applies a perspective transformation and maps this frustum into the 2 by 2 by 2 cube with x values ranging from minus 1 to 1, or from the left of the screen to the right of the screen, y values ranging from minus 1 to 1 from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, and pseudo distance values ranging from minus 1 to 1 for the near clipping plane and the far clipping plane. 
So the formula for this is very similar to what I had before. Let me get a snapshot. The matrix for this. is the following, 2n over r minus l, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2n over t minus b, 0, 0, r plus l over r minus l, t plus b over t minus b, minus f plus n, over f minus n, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 2, fn, over f minus n, 0. So this matrix is rather similar to the matrix P we just find in the previous presentation. Uh, we've got scaling on the x and y values to make the width be the right width, namely width 2. We've got um, scaling also on the z, but we've also got some translation, which turns up here. The translation is due to the fact that the center of the frustum doesn't need to be on the, on the z-axis. It could be shifted sideways or something like that. And so that, this provides some translation. And otherwise, it's very similar to the matrix we had before. And I'm not going to work out the details of the derivation. It's pretty much what we had before. So you might wonder, why do we want to allow a frustum that's not centered on the origin. Surely our convention is the viewer is sitting at the origin looking down the negative z-axis. Why do we care about views off to the side? And an example of this is an, if you have a tiled display, so an application here for off-center, if you have a tiled display, what that means is we have multiple monitors sitting next to each other to make a big display. So like you'll see this at one of the local movie theaters next to me, for instance, where I live. They've got a big wall, and on the wall there's like four by three array of big monitors that together are showing a monstrous picture across the entire wall. So each monitor is showing a frustum viewpoint from the, the movie or whatever. So if you want to do extra big displays like this, or a subset of a display, then an off-center is good. Uh, typically, though, we want centered, and there's a, if we want centered, we can either do this by just setting L equals minus R and B equals minus T, and that'll center around the z-axis. There's also another command, GLU perspective, which does this for you automatically, and I'll talk about this next. So the set GLU perspective command so there's a, a U here stands for utility. This reflects the fact that in the old OpenGL stuff this was not a core command that was defined in terms of other commands. It takes as parameters an angle, theta, a value, which I'll aspect ratio, and the near and the far values, n and f. So the aspect ratio means the ratio of width to height. So that's the width divided by the height of the, of the image. Width of the image of the screen divided by the height of the image. And the theta is the solid angle up and down for the frustum. So let me draw a side view here. Here's the frustum. And the front of the the front of the frustum is here. The back of the frustum is here. The viewer is sitting here and looking out this way. All right. And the angles up and down. The up and down angle is theta. 
and the aspect ratio is the ratio of the width to the height. So n is this distance out to here, f is the distance out to here, theta is the up-down angle, aspect ratio is the width divided by the height of the front or the back, they're the same. And then in this case, let's let um, let's use a for the aspect ratio, so I don't keep writing aspect ratio out so big. Then we have that the other parameters, this is the same as set gl frustum left, right, bottom, top, near, far, with, well, near and far like that. Top turns out to be n times tangent of theta over 2, okay, which is just because the top is the y value up here, so you take half of the value, it's theta over 2, and then bottom is minus top, and uh, right is a times t, aspect ratio times t, and the left is minus r, and the near and the far are the same as before. So GLU perspective just calls GL frustum with these parameters. So these kind of commands make it rather convenient to define projection matrices for the amount of perspective that you want. Typically you want to pick the theta value so as to match the actual theta value of the viewer. So if you're pitching your uh, video for someone sitting in a theater watching a movie, you think of the person who's sitting in the middle of the theater they're looking up at the screen, and you look at their ang solid angle theta that the screen occupies in their field of view. Uh, that's part of the reason why if you sit real close in a theater, things look all sort of wonky on the screen because the uh, perspective is wrong if you're sitting at the front of the theater. It's really adjusted, tailored for the middle of the theater. Um, it's also not quite right for the back of the theater, but it's less noticeable there. So, because the change in angle is less from the middle to the back. So, or more generally, if the user is sitting on the monitor, you sort of have to anticipate, looking at a monitor, you have to anticipate how big is the monitor, how far away is the user from the monitor, and then adjust the perspective appropriately to make it look decent for the, for the viewer. And that's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.